In this example, we're told we have a wind tunnel with a test section that's square and it's six meters long and there's air moving through it at an average speed of 30 meters per second. And we're told that to account for the growing boundary layer along the walls, the walls are slanted slightly outward. We're asked to find what angle the wall should be slanted between two meters and four meters to keep the test section, const the velocity constant. So the idea is this, if we have a test section with the walls a constant distance apart, then you get the growth of these boundary layers along the walls. And so the inviscid core in the center will actually start to speed up in order to conserve mass. So in order to compensate for that, what we want to do is tilt the walls outward so that the boundary layer growth keeps the test section cross-sectional area nearly constant. So we want this cross-sectional area to remain approximately constant. So we want to find out what this angle is right there, that angle theta. Now in order to find that, uh, it'll be the displacement thickness that we care about because recall that from the lecture, when you're dealing with mass flow rates, it's really the displacement thickness that uh, comes into play. So what we want to do is at x equals 2 meters, we want to find what that displacement thickness is there. And then also at x equals 4 meters, we want to find that displacement thickness. And then to find the angle, it'll be the tangent of theta is the difference in those displacement thicknesses divided by the distance between them, which would just be 4 meters minus 2 meters. So we need to find the displacement thickness. So in order to do that, we'll want to calculate the Reynolds number first. We want to know whether this is a laminar boundary layer or a turbulent boundary layer. So to find the Reynolds number based on the distance x from the leading edge where the boundary, boundary layer started, that'll just be the inviscid core velocity, capital U, that's the velocity that we're given is 30 meters per second times the distance x divided by the kinematic viscosity of air. So that'll be 30 meters so times 2 meters. So we're going to do it first at x equals 2 meters. And then if you look at the kinematic viscosity for air at this temperature, it's about 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 square meters per second. So when you plug those numbers in, you'll get a Reynolds number of 4 million, 4.0 million. So it's clearly turbulent. And then if you do the Reynolds number at 4 meters, you plug in those numbers, it'll come out to be 8 million. So both of these clearly are turbulent, so we'll want to use the we'll want to use the uh, displacement thickness expression for a turbulent boundary layer. So if we look that up from our tables for boundary layer thicknesses. It, I gave it in the lecture, it's also in the reading, so you can look up the expression from, from there. But the displacement thickness is 0 0.0478 divided by the Reynolds number raised to the one fifth power. So if you use that expression and you calculate out the displacement thickness at two meters, it'll come out to be 4.6 millimeters. And the displacement thickness at four meters comes out to be eight millimeters. So we can go ahead and plug these values in right up there and then calculate for the angle. And when you do that, it comes out to be 0.1 degrees. So that means if we angle these walls outward by about 0.1 degrees, then the boundary layer growth will be such that the inviscid core will remain at a nominally constant velocity, at least between two meters and four meters. And that's done in, in practice, actually, when they design um, wind tunnels, is they'll actually, they will either cant the walls of the wind tunnel outward a little bit, or another way that they do that is they'll make the walls of the wind tunnel porous and then suction out the boundary layer so you don't have to worry about the growth of the boundary layer.